Hello again, everybody. Barry Hyatt here in Scottsville at the UK Extension Office with my good friend, Kelly Burgess. Kelly, we had talked the last time we did a recipe segment about Mardi Gras, which this year is February 25th, by the way. And we thought, why not do some kind of Creole recipe? And you have delivered, haven't you? Yes, we have. We actually, there is a plated up Kentucky Proud recipe for cabbage jambalaya, which awesome. is a little bit healthier of a twist on a traditional uh, Creole meal. So yeah. we're really excited about it today. That's fantastic. Well, let's talk about that a little bit more. What all kinds of ingredients do we have to have for this? Sure. Well, what we have in the skillet already is some lean ground beef. Sure. We've got it started to brown, so that's your step one mm -hmm. <laughs> while we're talking. Yes. Uh, we also have celery, onions, and garlic, um, which is two of the three parts of the holy trinity of Creole cooking, <laughs> which is celery, onion, and bell peppers. Okay. Um, we also have some smoked sausage. Uh, yes. it, the recipe calls for smoked turkey sausage. Mm -hmm. The traditional would be the andouille sausage. Okay. Um, we have stewed tomatoes or diced tomatoes, um, canned and brown rice. Um, garlic powder and Creole seasoning and some cabbage of cabbage, course. Cabbage of course. Yes. yes. <laughs> Most certainly. That may be the main ingredient in this it recipe, is. I think. Yeah. Very good. All right, well let's go ahead. You said you've already ground uh, browned the ground beef. Yes, we have browned our ground beef. Okay. And so I'm gonna go ahead and add in our celery. It's one and a half cups of celery okay. while we're talking. So the recipe you kind of add in things one step at a time. Okay. So it Very guides good. you through. It tells you exactly how many minutes to do each item, but I've just kind of look to see, you know, does it look like it's starting to be cooked? And when it mm -hmm. does, then I'll go ahead and add in the next thing. Okay, very good. So we've added in our celery, and we'll just let that kind of hang out for a little bit. Okay. Um, on your ground meat, I will say, I used 93.7, which when you see those numbers on your packages of meat in the store, that indicates the ratio of lean meat mm -hmm. to fat percentage okay. that's in the meat. So you Very might good. see 80-20. Mm -hmm. That would be definitely a higher fat uh, variety. Mm -hmm. You could find 90-10. Um, mm -hmm. So anything 90-10 or above would be considered lean. Sure. Um, you can usually find the 93-7. I believe they also make 95 and 5%, which is wow. a little bit harder to find. Mm -hmm. um, in this recipe, we don't use any added oil. And so it's really fine to go ahead and use that about 93% sure, probably. Sure. That sounds awesome. So I'm starting to smell our celery a little yes. bit. So we'll go ahead and add in our onion. It's also a cup and a half of chopped onion. Mm -hmm. And two cloves of garlic minced. And I think I mentioned this maybe in our last recipe. You can always use the minced garlic uh, if you have it in the jar, if you don't have real garlic cloves on hand. But sure. if I have the real available or the, you know, in its natural state, I always prefer that. Mm -hmm. Most certainly. So we'll add that in. Let it come to just a little bit. So traditionally jambalaya, it is a highly seasoned stew, mm -hmm. is what it is. And so when we say seasoned, that means that we have these aromatic, the celery and onion, mm -hmm. but also the Cajun or Creole seasoning. That mm -hmm. gives it a little bit of heat. Uh, but not too much. I think a misconception is that Cajun cooking is always super spicy. Mm -hmm. uh, but I find that most of the time it's really more flavorful mm -hmm. than spicy. Right. Uh, just some really rich, uh, really good flavors rather than something that just burns your mouth out completely. <laughs> Of course, in New Orleans, they like to season things a little more probably than what you're doing in this recipe, but that's okay though, because sometimes people can't always deal with the, the high seasoning. Can right, they? exactly. And this is awesome. It's always, that's what I love cooking about, what I love about cooking at home in general is just the fact that you get to decide exactly what you want to put in most it. Most certainly, You most can certainly. choose what uh, proportion, what ratio of the meat you want, where if you buy something in the restaurant, you don't really know what kind they used. Mm -hmm. And sure. so, um, those health benefits are definitely a, a good reason to cook at home and kind of be in control of what you're putting. Most certainly, yes. So I'm gonna go ahead and add our uh, smoked turkey sausage okay. links, and we'll add in the whole um, a whole package that you would buy at the store. Gotcha. Okay. Very good. So that'll cook for about two or three minutes. Mm -hmm. We'll leave that to kind of brown just a little bit. And there, you, you're saying it's turkey sausage because you're going for the lean. It is, right. correct, mm -hmm. yes. And so um, 
like I said, the traditional would be the andouille sausage, which mm -hmm. is a pork sausage. Sure. And um, it's, it has spicy red pepper in it. So this might yes. even be a little bit milder. Mm -hmm. But sometimes Probably. you can find different heat levels, even of the turkey, um, in the store. And I find that when it's mixed in with all of the vegetables and herbs and spices, mm -hmm. I really can't tell the difference. Right. Exactly. By, by, by the time you've added everything else, it's like you just know it's uh, sausage at that point, don't you? Right, exactly. So while that's cooking, I'll kind of demonstrate a little bit, at least give my best hand at um, cutting up our cabbage. So if you've seen a head of cabbage before, mm -hmm. um, this is what we're going to start with today. Yes. It's a vegetable that is a great value for nutrition and for um, price-wise. Mm -hmm. So especially this time of year, cabbage, you can find... Um, usually on sale for a pretty uh, reasonable price per pound and they can be challenging to cut but i think we <laughs> i think we can do it here <laughs> that looks like a pretty pretty thick uh, cabbage there yay we got it <laughs> it'll give you an arm workout while you're at there it there you go so when you open up the cabbage you can see the part that looks like where the stem or where it grew mm. um, that's called the heart and we want to remove that. So you can sure. see a distinct pattern mm -hmm. and that's going to be hard and very bitter. And so you want to, you want to remove that out of your cabbage. Cut around that, I guess you yes. could say. Mm -hmm. You can do that by flipping it over so that you have your flat surface on your cutting board for okay. safe cutting. Sure. And just cut out a little triangle shape of where you see that. There you go. And then yeah, after, you, yes, after you've removed that piece, you can cut it up in strips so our recipe calls for chopped cabbage and it's a pretty easy and quick way to cut up such a large amount of vegetables mm -hmm. so we'll slice it all one way turn it around slice it all the opposite way and it gives you just very nice pieces oh, certainly. and even if they look like large pieces they will wilt um, once it goes into the recipe. And of course, you've already cut some up earlier, and this is kind of what she's talking about. This is how it's going to look right here. Yes. Uh, when she gets it cut and shredded, I guess you could say. Yes, so. and so a full head of cabbage should yield about 10 cups. Okay. And that's what our recipe calls for. So pick out a good-sized cabbage and throw in the whole thing. And get ready for that arm workout, right? <laughs> yes, get ready for the arm workout. <laughs> um, so no need to go to the gym that day, I guess. No. So since this has started to cook, I can smell that sausage distinctly. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna add in our one can of diced tomatoes with the juice. You don't wanna, don't discard the juice. Keep it because it'll help add some moisture mm -hmm. to your recipe. Sure. We also have two cups of water. Oh and boy, that really quiet, quieted things did. down, didn't it? Yeah. And one cup of brown rice. So that's another uh, little subtle tweak that increases the health of this recipe is using the brown rice. That's also a staple in New Orleans type cooking too, honestly. Yes. I mean, they love brown rice. Rice is, um, it's kind of the base of everything. Whether you have a jambalaya, mm -hmm. a gumbo, an etouffee, um, sure. those are all, most dishes are either have rice incorporated or they're served over rice. Mm -hmm. so, most certainly, most certainly. We'll add a teaspoon of garlic powder and a tablespoon of the Creole seasoning. Mm -hmm. And there's different brands of that. It doesn't matter what just kind. It's just a, mm -hmm. just a spice blend. And so, <coughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> a little of that <laughs> can go up your nose. And that's what just happened, apparently. Mm -hmm. It did, wow. <laughs> okay, well, that's fine, no problem. Just, you recover and we'll keep on talking here. Oh, now, th this, is the, uh, this is the seasoning that you use. Yes. It's called Tony, is that Chacker? I would say so. Uh, sh sh shashir. Shashir. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a French It's name. probably a French word, which is the yeah. basis of, you know, French yeah. Creole cooking. Yeah, Creole um, seasoning. That's what it says right there. Okay. So that's the kind that um, I have always seen used. And so. And that's, that's the a kind that just blend. made you cough a little bit. Yeah. It did. <laughs> it was not the garlic, it was definitely the Creole. <laughs> so I'm going to turn this on high. Uh, we want to see our juices boil. Mm hmm. And then this takes about, once you get to this point, how much longer are we thinking about here? Sure. This is the end of your hands-on time, pretty okay. much. Okay. Um, while this is heating, I'll also add our cabbage in. Sure. Um, and we want it to wilt uh, before we walk away from it. Okay. So that's kind of your last step, is to make sure that you see your cabbage wilt, um, which adding a lid um, can help that help speed that process along. Sure. And I think you have one right here. Yes, we do. So we can... Um, 
you go ahead you and mix that up a little bit more and then we'll put sure. the lid on there. Yeah, sure. mix it up. Um, so once you have all this, once your cabbage is wilted and it's come to a boil, uh, the juices, you can reduce your heat to a simmer or maybe like a one or two on your stove. Mm -hmm. um, and you can walk away for about 40 minutes. Uh, and when you come back, that rice will be cooked and all of those flavors will have mixed together really nicely. And you've already made another batch of this, and, and what was your verdict after you tasted it? It was, it was very good. I would say that the spice is mild, uh, very mild compared to what, what I would expect for a traditional um, Cajun dish. And I also think that the cabbage, it lightens it up a lot. Okay. Uh, sometimes, you know, with the sauces and if it has a dark roux, that's another traditional mark of Cajun mm -hmm. cooking. Mm -hmm. um, it can seem heavy or, you know, very filling or with a lot of rice that can also be very filling. Mm -hmm. So I think that adding the, the vegetables to it, obviously health benefits of the cabbage, but um, it really, I feel like it makes it go longer. It makes it, yes. makes it, you can enjoy it more uh, without getting full so quickly. So. There you go. Well, fantastic. Anyways. And then, like you say, after, we'll go ahead and put the top on yep, here. Yep, we'll put our lid on. And let you finish that here in about, you say, 30, 40 minutes, give or take. Yes, and about then. 40 minutes. Check. I would say uh, the thing to look for is to make sure that rice is done. Very uh, good. So if you need to leave it on for a couple more minutes to get that rice soft, mm -hmm. the rest of it will be fine. Good deal. Well, hey guys, if you want the recipe, it's oh so easy to get. You can get it in a few ways. You can email me at North Central. My email address there is barry.hyatt at nctc.com. Or you can also go to our website. It's www.nctc.com. And also, Kelly has one more way. Yes, if you just search Plate It Up Kentucky Proud in your search bar, the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service will pop up. You can search by season or by produce type. Um, you can also find us on Facebook at Plate It Up Kentucky Proud. Fantastic. Well, thanks so much for all your hard work on this. And I think it's a wonderful recipe to try. Thanks, Barry. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care. Have a great rest of your day. And we'll see you back here again real soon.